Zum Namen deiner Zeit. Let's begin with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet anfangen. Lieber Vater im Himmel, Thank you that we can worship you again. danke, dass wir ein weiteres Mal dich anbeten können, And that we can open your words once more. dass wir dein Wort äh, wieder auftun können And that we can learn of you. und dass wir von dir lernen können. Und bitte bringe all diese Dinge wieder in Sinn, was wir bereits angeschaut haben. And please bring new connections, uh, to pass. Und bitte bringe neue Verbindungen, Verknüpfungen zustande. And help us to see the things as you see them. Und hilft uns, die Sachen zu sehen, so wie du sie siehst. And that your word might, uh, give us the living power to change our lives. Und dass dein Wort uns das lebendige Kraft geben möge, unsere Leben zu verändern. And we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Und wir bitten und beten in Jesu Namen. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, weiteres Mal, guten Abend. And I posted some notes. Einige Notizen habe ich. Some quotes, rather. Besser gesagt, einige Zitaten habe ich in den Livestream dafür gepostet. Und als ich sie gepostet habe, ist mir fest, ich habe festgestellt, dass sie nicht unbedingt in den richtigen Reihenfolge sind. But, uh, I will guide you through. Aber ich werde uns durch, dadurch hindurchführen. Okay. So please go to those notes. So gehen wir jetzt zu diesen Zitaten. And let's look at this uh, quote from Five Testimonies 752.1. Und wir schauen die ersten Zitat an vom fünften Band der Zeugnisse 751.1. 52. 52.1. And it starts with this vision was given to Ezekiel. Ist der dritte Zitat, so wie wir ausgelistet sind, und es fängt an. Diese Vision würde Hesekiel gegeben. Okay. Everybody there? Jeder da? It says this vision, and she speaks about Ezekiel chapter one. Und sie spricht über Hesekiel Kapitel eins hier. She says, she says this vision was given to Ezekiel at a time when his mind was filled with gloomy forebodings. He saw the land of his fathers lying desolate. The city that was once full of people was no longer inhabited. The voice of mirth and the song of praise were no more heard within her walls. The prophet himself was a stranger in a strange land where boundless ambition and savage cruelty reigned supreme. That which he saw and heard of human tyranny and wrong distressed his soul and he mourned bitterly day and night. So what did he do? Was tat er? He mourned day and night, right? Klagte Tag und Nacht. So, where on our, our line do we have this prophetic marker? Und wo auf unserer Linie markieren wir Tag und Nacht? Yes, yes. Day so, and night. Hier drin. Tag und Nacht. So, please give me some other illustrations where we see this day and night experience in here. Gib mir weitere Beispiele, wo wir diesen Tag und Nacht Erfahrung hier drin markieren. Okay, Revelation 12. Offenbarung 12. And what is in Revelation 5, 12? Und was ist in Offenbarung 12? Uh, Satan is accusing you day and night. Yes, Satan is, is accusing you day and night. Satan so right? klagt an, Tag und Nacht hier drin. Okay. Um, any other illustration? Weitere Darstellung? Mordecai. Mordecai? Okay. Mordecai. He cried bitterly. He cried bitterly, but it was not day and night. Also er hat zwar ein bitteres Ruf gegeben, aber es ist nicht so unbedingt da markiert als Tag und Nacht. But uh, this is also an illustration of the sixth plague, right? Aber das hier ist auch eine Darstellung des sechsten Plages. And why again? Und warum wohl? Because the whole Sunday war crisis is the seven plagues. Mm. That's the death decree, right? Das ist der Todesdekret. Oh, okay, so the threefold union comes together to make the death decree. So die dreifaltige Union kommt zusammen um den Todesdekret zu machen. And what do the saints then do? Und was tun die Heiligen? They cry day and night for deliverance. Sie rufen Tag und Nacht für Befreiung. Okay, so this is the day and night experience. Diese Tag und Nacht Erfahrung hier drin. 
Okay, and Ezekiel was mourning day and night. Okay. Und Ezekiel hat geklagt oder geweklagt Tag und Nacht. Day and night. Okay. And then what was the, the result of it? Und was war der Resultat davon? Okay, let's see. Let's read it. Yeah. Das lesen. Mm -hmm. So that which he saw and heard of human tyranny and wrong distressed his soul, and he mourned bitterly day and night. But the wonderful symbols presented before him beside the river Chiba revealed an overruling power mightier than that of earthly rulers. Above the proud and cruel monarchs of Assyria and Babylon, the God of mercy and truth was enthroned. So, after he mourned day and night, he then received this vision. vision right? so, nachdem er geklagt hat, Tag und Nacht, er erhielt diese Vision. And according to Ezekiel 1, verse 1, when was this vision given to him? Und gemäß Ezekiel 1, Vers 1, wann wurde diese Vision ihm gegeben? Fifth day of the fourth month, right? Fünften Tag des vierten Monats. Which is midnight. Right? Was Mitternacht ist. Okay. Right. So, now, let's go to the next quote. So, lasst uns jetzt zu der nächsten Zitat gehen. And this speaks now about Isaiah. Und das spricht jetzt über Jesaja. And in this And it's also again from five testimonies, just a few paragraphs before what we read about Ezekiel. Und das ist auch äh, von fünften Band des Zeugnisse, nur ein paar Absätze davor, wo wir gerade über Ezekiel gelesen haben. And in this chapter, Sister White compares the experience of Isaiah with the experience of Ezekiel with the experience of John, as we will see. Und Ellen White in diesem äh, Absatz, also in diesem ähm, Kapitel, Sie vergleicht die Erfahrung von Jesaja mit der Erfahrung von Hesekiel mit der Erfahrung von Johannes, wie wir sehen. John the Revelator. So Johannes der Täufer oder Johannes der Offenbarer. Okay. okay, so let's see. So Ezekiel, he was mourning, right? He was in this gloomy forebodings, she said. Like so Hesekiel hat geweklagt, er war in diese ja, quasi Depression. And, uh, Until he received the vision. Bis okay. er diese Vision uh, erhielt. Because then he saw that God was over everything. So, so what is it? God. Ah, okay, dann sagt er, dass Gott über alles ist. Okay, so now let's see it, Isaiah. So, lasst uns jetzt über Jesaja lesen. It says, it was under circumstances of difficulty and discouragement that Isaiah, while yet a young man, was called to the prophetic mission. So, in what situation was Isaiah? So, in welchem Zustand befand sich Jesaja? Same as Ezekiel. Yes, same as Ezekiel, right? The same as Ezekiel. Was this This depressed and discouraged and all these things. So, er war depressiv und entmutigt und so weiter. And jump down to the next uh, bold face. Und kommen wir hinunter bis zum nächsten fettgedrückten Teil. His task seemed to him almost hopeless. Should he in despair relinquish his mission and leave Israel undisturbed to their idolatry? Were the gods of Nineveh to rule the earth in defiance of the God of heaven? Such thoughts as these were crowding upon his mind as he stood under the portico of the holy temple. Suddenly, the gate in the inner veil of the temple seemed to be uplifted or withdrawn, and he was permitted to gaze within upon the holy of holies, where even the prophet's feet might not enter. So, uh, he was in the same situation as, as Ezekiel. Right? So, er befand sich in denselben Umständen oder Situationen wie Ezekiel. What then happened to him? Was geschah mit ihm? Yeah, suddenly he saw then the vision, right? So, plötzlich hat er diese Vision erhalten. And this word says, how does midnight come? And Alan White said, wie kommt der Mitternacht auf? Suddenly, right? Yeah. For instance, all, yeah, Saul, right? You said Saul? So, Saul. No, suddenly is the midnight. Okay, so. So, plötzlich ist der Mitternacht. Yes, Saul, right? So, Saul auch noch. Because he was on his way to Damascus. Er war auf dem Weg nach Damaskus. And it was... Und es war... Suddenly. Suddenly at... Plötzlich zur... Midday. Midday, right? Mittag. Okay, which is Mittag. Was auch gleich Mitternacht ist. Okay. Suddenly. Okay. And, um, and then he sees holy, holy, holy. Dann sieht er heilig, heilig, heilig. And he looks into the most holy place, right? Er schaut in das Allerheiligste hinein. Yeah, that's what we just here read in the quote. Das ist das, was wir gerade hier in den Zitat gelesen haben. Okay, so he sees the most 
Holy Place. Ihr seht das Allerheiligste. Okay. And um, now let's go to the next quote. Gehen wir jetzt zur nächsten Zitat. And that is um, further down a little bit. This is uh, weiter hinab. Is it? No, actually up. Hmm? Yes. The, this this uh, quote here from Review and Herald, December 22nd. This is wieder hinauf und es ist von diesem Zitat von R.H. Second. Yeah. Second this is the second quote. This is the second quote. Says, speaking about Isaiah, okay, Isaiah's experience. Says, the vision given to Isaiah represents the condition of God's people in the last days. They are privileged to see by faith the work that is going forward in the heavenly sanctuary. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in the, his temple the ark of his testament. As they look by faith into the holy of holies, and see the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary, they perceive that they are people of unclean lips. So, what are they to do? So, what sollen sie tun? Yes, look by faith into the most holy place. Right? Also, durch Glaube in das Allerheiligste hinein. And in this final test, what are we tested upon? Und in dieser finale Test, an was werden wir getestet werden? Right? Glauben. Yes. So by faith, we need to look into the most holy place, she says here. So durch Glaube, wir müssen hier in das Allerheiligste hineinschauen. And what can we then see? Und was können wir dann According sehen? What we just read. Gemäß, was wir gerade gelesen haben. His glory. No, according to what we read. Say it again. Yes, the work of Christ. Also das Werk Christi im Heiligtum. Okay. Okay. And the work of Christ. Uh, in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes, in the heavenly sanctuary, in the most holy place. Das Werk Christi im himmlischen Heiligtum, im Allerheiligsten. Okay. Um, all right. Now, let's go to down again. So, gehen wir wieder hinab, hinunter meine ich. And just go back to five testimonies. Zurück zur fünften Band des Zeugnisses. And actually, go back to the third quote. Geht zurück zur dritten Zitat. About Ezekiel. Über okay. Ezekiel. So it says here, this vision was given to Ezekiel at a time when his mind was filled with gloomy forebodings. He saw the land of his fathers lying desolate. And just jump, jump down to the next uh, bold face. That which he saw and heard of human tyranny and wrong distressed his soul, and he mourned bitterly day and night. But the wonderful symbols presented before him beside the river Sh Shiva revealed an overruling power mightier than that of earthly rulers. Above the proud and cruel monarchs of Assyria and Babylon, the God of mercy and truth was enthroned. So, what did Ezekiel see here? So, what had Ezekiel here seen? God on the throne. Yeah, God on the throne, right? God of the throne. And how he is enthroned above the earthly rulers. And wie er über den irdischen Herrschern auf dem Thron regiert. Okay. And now go down to Let's the last quote. Hinunter zum letzten Zitat. Das, das ist nur... Just after the, she describes the experience of Ezekiel. Das ist gerade nachdem sie die Erfahrung von Ezekiel beschreibt. Then she says, in the like manner, when God was about to open to the beloved John the history of the church for future ages, he gave him an assurance of the Savior's interest and care for his people by revealing to him one like the son of like unto the son of man walking among the candlesticks 
which symbolized the seven churches. So she now compares Ezekiel's experience with John's experience. Right? So she vergleicht jetzt Hesekiel's seine Erfahrung mit die des Johannes. And what did John see? Und was sah Johannes? Christ walking among the candles. Yeah, Christ walking among the candles. Right? Christus, der inmitten der Leuchter äh, wandelte. Okay, just keep this in mind. Okay, so I just mark it's already it's down. The same it's, it's, so it's uh, yet Isaiah. You had Jesaja. You had Ezekiel. Ezekiel. And you had John. And Johannes. Yes. Okay. And Sister White, she connects all these three visions. And then White brings all these three visions together. Okay, they must all see the same thing. They must not all the same see. Okay, so in Zechariah, says, when they wake up, which is midnight, says, what see is that? He says, I see yes. a candlestick, but he's got the cherubims on the side of it, which is the same illustration as what Isaiah saw. Yes. Yes. Zechariah, yes. um, Mitternacht, er wacht auf und er sagt, was siehst du? Und er sagt, ich sehe ein Leuchter, aber die zwei Cherubim sind zur linken und rechten und das Öl hineingießen. Und das ist dasselbe Vision wie Jesaja und Hesekiel. So it shows the work that Christ is doing for his church yes. in the sanctuary. Das zeigt äh, das Werk, was äh, Christus für seine Gemeinde tut im Heiligtum. Yes, so we saw uh, John, he saw now Christ walking up and down among the candlesticks. Okay? Johannes, wie wir gelesen haben, er sah Christus, wie er inmitten diesen Leuchtern auf und ab ging. Yeah. Isaiah saw the work of Christ and John sees the work of Christ among the Isaiah hat das Werk Christi gesehen und Johannes sieht das Werk Christi mitten unter den Leuchtern. I wonder if it represents the wise virgins. And the reason I say that is because at midnight, when they hear the call, they pour the oil into the lamps. Right? Also ich wundere mich, ob das stellt die äh, klugen Jungfrauen da, denn am Mitternacht, wenn am Mitternacht, wenn sie den Ruf hören. Sie gießen das Öl von ihrem Gefäß in ihrem Lampen hinein. Zechariah, du siehst diese zwei Gesalten, wie die das Öl in der Leuchte eingießen. So that candlestick that Christ walking amongst the represents the wise virgins. Diese Leuchter, unter dem Christus wandelt, da stellt die weisen Jungfrauen. Because the other ones, they have no oil and they don't have faith. Die anderen haben kein Öl, die haben kein Glaube. So it's not amongst them. Er ist nicht so unter sie. Mm -hmm. Yes, that might be very well the case. Oops. Möge sehr wohl der Fall sein. Okay, let's go now to the first quote. So, gehen wir zum ersten Zitat. And in this first quote, we will see now that she links Zechariah chapter 3. Sorry, no, no, right. Zechariah chapter 3 with Revelation 1. Und in diesem ersten Zitat werden wir sehen, dass sie Zechariah 3 mit Offenbarung 1 verbindet. Okay. It says here, here then comes in the Redeemer's work. Satan stood by the side of the angel as an adversary to accuse Joshua as a transgressor of the law. So this is Zechariah chapter 3, right? Das spricht über Zechariah 3. This angel, who is our Savior, was seen by John the Revelator and represented as standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the breast with a golden girdle. So she says, this angel that you could see in Zechariah 3, so she said, this angel that you in Zechariah 3 see, is the same angel which is Christ in Revelation 1, right? It's the same angel that Christ is in Offenbarung 1. Yes, everybody sees this? Can you see that? Yes? Amen. Okay. And then she goes on to say, <coughs> then sagt sie weiter, Christ is represented in actual ministry for his people, as was Joshua in the Day of Atonement in behalf of the children of Israel. So what does she, sh she say? When Christ is now walking among the golden candlesticks, so was sagt sie hier, wenn Christus mitten unter den golden, goldenen Leuchtern wandelt, what is he doing? Was tut er? Interceding is also... Um, Thinking on your behalf, like rebuking Satan. Yes, okay. Doing the work of the day of atonement. Yes, he's mm -hmm. doing the work of the day of atonement. Right? So, right. so we can see, therefore, right, that John, when he 
sees now Christ here among the candlesticks. So we can see here that when Johannes here Christus mitten under the leuchtern wandeln sieht, and that this is basically the work of the Day of Atonement. That is that here the work of the Versöhnungstags is that he sees. Okay, just like Isaiah. Genau so yeah. wie Jesaja. Because Isaiah also looks into the most holy place and sees Christ work in the most holy place. Then Jesaja schaut ins Allerheiligste hinein und sieht das Werk Christi im Allerheiligsten. And Ezekiel, because she links it with the other prophets. Und Hesekiel, weil sie ihm mit diese andere Propheten verbindet. He must have seen the same thing, right? Er musste denn wohl dasselbe gesehen haben. Yes. Amen. Okay. So. Having understood this, everybody followed. Da wir das verstanden haben, also folgt jeder so weit. Or is any question left? Oder hat jemand da eine Frage an dieser Stelle? Okay, okay. Then um, let's go to Ezekiel one. Lasst uns in unserem Bibel Ezekiel eins aufschlagen. Hesekiel 1 und Vers 1. It says, Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Sheba, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Okay, so what did he see? Was sah er? Visions of God. Okay. So, Visionen von Gott. Visions of God. Okay. And then he basically he saw the four living creatures, right? Dann sah er die vier lebendigen Wesen. And what did he also see? Und was sah er denn noch? Jump down to verse 22. Kommt bis Vers 22. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other, every one had two which covered on this side, and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies. So, what did he see? What saw he? He saw the four living creatures, and what did they have on their head? He saw the four living creatures, and what had they on their head? Yes, this firmament, right? This volbe or feste. Okay, and now go to um, 26. Verse 26. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. So, on top of this firmament was was seen. So, über diese feste was wurde gesehen? A throne, right? Throne. And somebody Und sitting on the throne. Der right? Okay, and this throne was the as appearance of a sapphire stone. Also right? Throne had the ansehen yes. eines sapphire stones. And Brahma, can you maybe open the windows? Yeah. All right. So, and basically, then in verse twenty-eight, he stumbled in the dust when he saw this. Verse right? 28, nachdem er dies sieht, wird er in Staub gedehnt. Okay. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 10. Jetzt gehen wir zu Hesekiel Kapitel 10. Verse 1. Vers 1. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So does it sound, sound familiar? Same. It's the same, right? It's the same, right? Okay, and just to confirm that it's the same? Und um dies zu bestätigen, dass es eben derselbe ist. Jump down to verse 21 to 22. Kommt zu Vers 21, 22, ja. And everyone had four faces, speaking about the cherubims. Sprecht über die Cherubim. Everyone had four faces apiece, and everyone four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces 
which I saw by the river of Sheba, their appearances <coughs> and themselves, and they went everyone straight forward. <coughs> so he says, it was the same as in, at the river Sheba. Sheba. And which is Ezekiel <coughs> chapter 1, right? So we have Ezekiel 1 here, so we have here Ezekiel 1. but also we have Ezekiel 10. Aber right? auch Ezekiel 10. Okay. <coughs> and now let's go to and Ezekiel 10. What two chapters precede, precede Ezekiel 10? And Ezekiel 10, which two chapters come before? Ezekiel 1 and 2. 8 and 9. Ezekiel 8 and 9. Okay, 8 and 9. Okay. So 8 and 9. And what does Ezekiel 8 speak about? And what, what does Ezekiel 9 speak about? And what spricht Ezekiel 8 and what does Ezekiel 9? Okay, yes. But this is already the interpretation. The four abominations. Yes, the four abominations. Right? In the fourth, he's not hearing you anymore. And the result is Ezekiel 9. Right? The five men with the sword of weapons come and execute judgment. Okay, in Ezekiel 10, we'll see now when we go to verse 2. It says, And he spake unto the man clothed, clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. So, what is now about to take place here? So, what is here, or what is stated before to be seen here? Destruction of the city. Right? Uh, and what city is referred to here? Jerusalem, right? Okay, so Jerusalem is to be destroyed. And this illustrates the destruction of the cities. Right? And how is it to be destroyed? Coals of fire. Coals of fire, right? Heiße Feuerkohle. Okay, and he's to, he's to take it from between the cherubims, right? Okay. So where else do we have an illustration where Christ now, because... The man in linen is Christ, right? So, this man in Leinwand here is Christus. Where else do we see an illustration that Christ takes hot coals and throws them down as a judgment? And wo noch sehen wir, wo Christus heiße Kohlen nimmt und sie als ein Gericht hinabwirft? So, Revelation. Yeah, Revelation 8. Right? Right? So, let's go to Revelation 8. And Sodom is obviously also the right answer. Lass uns zu Offenbarung 8 gehen. Und natürlich Sodom, das ist auch eine richtige Antwort. Coals of fire, which destroyed Sodom. The fire bellet the Sodom destroyed. Okay, Revelation eight. Let's read verses three to five. We'll read the verses three to five. Okay. It says, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. So, at which item is he standing here? So, by which Gegenstand steht er here? Altar of incense. Altar of incense, right? Altar. Okay. And then it says in verse 5. Verse 5 says... And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Okay, so what does it mark when he now cast down these coals? So, was markiert das, wenn er jetzt diese Kohlen niederwirft? Close of provision. Close of provision, right? Why? Warum wohl? Thunderings and lightnings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he stops interceding, right? I heard of also you've got the, the seven trumpets that typify the seven last plagues pouring out immediately when yes. you cast it down. Aber du hast auch die sieben Posaunen, die die sieben letzten Plagen vorausschatten, die geschehen, wenn er das tut. Okay, so the, this fire coming now down on the cities uh, marks the destruction of 
Jerusalem or the cities. Right? Denn dieses Feuer, der hier abkommt, das markiert die Zerstörung Jerusalem oder die Städte. Okay, which would be then here or perfectly here, right? Das wäre denn hier oder sogar auf perfekte Weise hier. Okay, I just mark it for now for here because we looked at this box here, right? Also ich this markiere one. das vorerst hier, nur weil wir hauptsächlich auf diesen Kasten unsere Augen mehr gerichtet haben. Okay. No fire. Und das ist Zerstörung durch Feuer. Okay. Um, now let's go to. I just want to show this. Let's go back to Ezekiel 10. Gehen wir zurück zu Ezekiel 10. Let's read verse 2 again and let's read down to verse 4. Verse 2 bis 4. It says, And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubims stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Okay, so what was now filled with the Lord's glory? Was würde mit dem Herrlichkeit des Herrn erfüllt? Gefüllt. Or, what represents the world. Oh, yes. Der Vorhof. So the house was filled with the cloud, right? Also das Haus war mit der Wolke erfüllt. And what is the house an illustration of? Und das Haus, was stellt das da? God's people. God's people, right? Volk. So God's people are now filled with the Holy Spirit. Und Gottes Volk sind jetzt voll des Heiligen Geistes. And therefore now the glory of the Lord fills the court, which is the world. Right? Deswegen die Herrlichkeit des Herrn füllt der Vorhof, was eine Darstellung der Welt ist. Holy, 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 Heilig the whole Heilig earth Heilig. is full of the glory, right? Die ganze Erde ist voll der Herrlichkeit. Yes? Amen? Okay. So. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. 14. 14. 14. Lass uns jetzt zu Ezekiel 40 gehen. Okay, and let's begin in verse 1. It says, In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year, after that the city was smitten, in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. So what came upon him? Was ist über ihm gekommen? The hand of the Lord. Okay. Hand des Herrn. So keep your finger here. Halte den Platz hier. Let's go back to Ezekiel 1. Let's go to Ezekiel 1 zurück. And let's read verse 3. Verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Sheba, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. So what came upon him? The hand of the Lord. Right? Okay, let's go back to verse 40, uh, uh, chapter 40. So the hand of the Lord came upon him, and now verse 2. In the visions of God. In what? Was? Visions of God. Visionen von Gott. What did we see in Ezekiel 1 verse 1? Was haben wir Ezekiel 1 verse 1? He saw visions of God, right? Er sah Visionen von Gott. Ah. Same thing. So in the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which he was by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. So he sees now a man 
holding what in his hand? So, er sieht ein Mann und er hält was in seiner Hand? Measuring reed, right? Ein Maßstab. Okay. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee, for to the intent that I might show them unto thee art thou brought hither. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So what was co the commission given to him? So was war der Auftrag, der ihm gegeben wurde? Er, yes, exactly. Okay. So was du siehst, schreib nieder. Everything that he was seeing, he was to declare to God's people. Right? Alles, was er sieht, er sollte Gottes Volk erklären. So, and so, so you already made the connection. Keep your finger here. Let's go to Revelation 1. Und ich halte den Platz hier und gehe zur Offenbarung 1. And then verse 11. Vers 11. It says, saying, okay. Revelation 1, 11. Offenbarung 1, Vers 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the churches which are in Asia. So, the same thing, right? So, that's same. Yeah. So, what he was seeing, he was to declare now to God's people. So, was er sah, er sollte Gottes Volk erklären. Okay, and we saw that John saw Christ walking among the candlesticks. Here. Und wir haben gesehen, dass Johannes sah Christus, der hier mitten unter den Leuchtern wandelt. Okay, just like Isaiah saw it. Genau, so wie Jesaja es sah. But also, as we will see now, Ezekiel saw this. Okay. Aber auch, wie wir sehen werden, Ezekiel sah. Okay, let's go back to Ezekiel 40. Ezekiel 40 wieder. So, can you see all the parallels? Konntet ihr yes. die Parallelen sehen? So therefore, Ezekiel 40 is also marked here. So right? Deswegen, Ezekiel 40 ist auch hier yeah. markiert. The hand of the Lord came upon him, he saw yeah. the visions of God. Der Hand des Herrn yeah. war auf ihm, er hat die Visionen Gottes gesehen. Yeah. And now, he was, what he was about to be shown, he was then to declare to God's people. Und jetzt das, was er sehen wird, soll er Gottes Volk erklären. And he saw a man with a measuring reed. Und right? er hat einen Mann mit einem Maßstab in der Hand gesehen. Okay. So, I mark down Ezekiel 40. So, ich markiere Ezekiel 40 hier. Okay. <coughs> And now let's continue in verse 5. Lesen wir weiter, Vers 5. And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, and in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit and a hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building one reed, and the height one reed. Then he came unto the gate which looketh east toward the east, and went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate which was one reed broad. And every little chamber was one reed long, And one reed brought, and between the little chambers were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within one reed, and so on and so forth. So the next verses in the chapter is just this work of measuring. Right? Also, die nächsten Versen durch diesen Kapitel hindurch ist das Werk von ähm, Messen. And when you go to chapter 41, it's still measuring. Okay? And chapter 42, it's still measuring. Okay. And what is he measuring? The temple. Right? And what is the temple? It's us, right? Okay. And how is he measuring us? What is it that measures us? Was ist es, was uns messt? Sorry? Yes. Sein Wort. Okay. Because what is he when you have this final test, what is he looking at? Wenn du diese finale Test hast, was schaut er an? When he takes the word, what is he measuring? Wenn er diesen Wort nimmt, was messt er? Measuring the temple, which is us. Yes. To sign holy principles. Yes, and when Christ was tempted in the desert. Also wenn Christus in der Wüste versucht würde. What did he answer the devil? Mit was antwortete er dem Teufel? Was steht da? Ein Zwischenrecht des Herrn. Uh, man, let's not 
by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. Der Mensch lebt nicht von Brot allein, sondern okay. von jeder Wort Gottes. So the measuring reed is the word of God, right? Das Maßstab ist das Wort Gottes. And he's looking whether you now live according to every word. Und er schaut, ob du nun lebst gemäß jedes Wort Gottes. And because Satan gets the permission to, to test you according to every word of God, right? Und Satan bekommt die Erlaubnis, dich zu prüfen oder zu testen gemäß jedes Wort Gottes. I mean, in our time it will be according to our knowledge, but still. In unserer Zeit ist wird gemäß den Wissen, die wir bereits erhalten haben, aber dennoch. And this must be the test, right? Das muss der Test sein. Everything the Lord has revealed to you, because Brother Mark shared with us, yeah, we will be just tested upon what we learned before. Right? So, Brother Mark hat uns gezeigt, wir werden getestet nach dem, was wir zuvor gelernt haben. So, everything that the Lord has revealed to us, alles, was der Herr uns geoffenbart hat, this will be our test. das yeah. wird denn unser Test werden. According to our Capacity. Gemäß okay. unserer Fähigkeit. Okay. So, and this is then this measuring reed that will be basically placed upon you to see. Und okay. dieses dieser Maßstab, der oft dich gelegt werden, um zu sehen, it's also the royal cubit, right? It's a royal measuring line. Yes. It's a, a, a cubit plus a handspan. Yes, that's right. 21. Yes, yes. Yes, because you are called to be kings and priests, right? Or royal priesthood. Gerufen, um Könige und Priestern zu sein. Eine königliche Priesterschaft. Okay. So, now go to Ezekiel 43. So, geht zu Ezekiel 43 jetzt. Let's begin in verse 1. Und fangen wir in Vers 1 an. Afterward, so that's now the, the end of the measuring. Okay. So, das ist nachdem er alles gemessen hat. Did you know, it's 126. Sorry? Das ist was? 126 ist das, weil es sagt 6 ah. Ellen lang und es ist die königliche Elle, was eine Elle ist und eine Handbreite. Es ist 6 mal yeah. 21. Es ist der fliegende Roll. Fliegende Rolle, der yeah. dich misst, was die Bibel ist. Das ist das, was dich in allerletzte richten wird. Yes, that's a nice point. I never noticed this. Das ist eine schöne yeah. Punkt, auch, Everybody das ich noticed? nicht erkannt. Hat jeder yeah. gehört, was okay. du da meinst? Let's go back to Ezekiel 40. Geht zurück zu Ezekiel 40. And let's read verse 5 again. Und Vers 5, ein weiteres Mal. Es sagt, And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, in the, in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long, by the cubit and in hand breadth. So, the reed was six cubits long, right? So, diese Stab war sechs Ellen lang. So, six cubits. Sechs Ellen. But, the cubit, it says here, how long this cubit is, it's the cubit and an... Breath, Aber right? diese Elle hier, diese Maßeinheit, es sagt hier, dass es eine Elle und eine Handbreite so ist. So, cubit was usually 18, 18 inches. Eine Elle war normalerweise 18 Zoll. Yeah. But the hand breadth was 3. Aber eine Handbreite würde dann 3 äh, Zoll. So, and this was also called the royal cubit. Okay. Und das würde den königlichen Elle genannt. So, 21 inches. So, 21 Zoll. So you have then, so this is the one, one cubit. So this is then ein Elle. A royal cubit, okay. Ein königliches Elle. So six, therefore you have six cubits, which is therefore six times 21 inches. So sechs Ellen, was sechs mal 21 Zoll ist. Which is then... 126 inches. Right? 126 Zoll wert. Yes. Amen. Okay, so and this shows us basically uh, this illustration of the symbol of this 1260. This is a symbol of this 1260. Because, or 2520 rather. Or the 2520. Yes. Because, yes, 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 126 so, shekels. 126 shekels, what's that again? No. Um, shekels. Shekels? Okay, shekels. But how do you go from 126 to 1,200? 20 gilas is a shekel. 
So 20 yeah. uh, geras is in I mean, you, you, you cannot really take 126 inches and make it 1260. 12, 20, 25, 20, because. Yeah. Okay. But it, it's just the same symbol like 126 shekels in Daniel 5. But it's the same symbol as the 126 shekels in Daniel 5. Yeah, many, many tekel ufazin, right? So many, many tekel ufazin. It was 126. So 126. Mene is 15, 50 shekel. So mene is 50 shekel. So mene, mene. Mene, mene. 50, 50. Mene, mene. Tekel. Tekel. Tekel is shekel. shekel. And tekel is 1. Is one. Ein shekel. And ufa, zin, or... What's the way the, the mene? I don't know if it's not correctly spelled. Ufazin. Yeah, not M, N at the end. N? Yes. Okay. So, oh, five 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 five. so you have had 126 shekel. So you had 126 shekel. A shekel is 20 gira. And a shekel is 20, jeder is 20 gira. And there was a smaller measuring unit which was gera. Also, this is a kleinere Maßeinheit, ein gera. And because the Bible says the temple shekel was 20 gera. And the Bible sagt, dass der Tempel shekel war aus 20 gera entstanden. So you had 25 20. So it was 20 yeah. by 126, was die 25 20. But the fact yeah. that when you go to Zechariah, it's the, the, the what measures you is, is the flying rope. Yes. And the flying roll is the Bible. Zechariah, was mystic is the fliegende the roll, and the fliegende roll is the Bible. So the Bible is measuring you, this rod is measuring you, the both the same things. This Bible is what you missed, this Maßstab is what you missed. Then sind die beide das same. And the flying roll is the two sides of 1260. So you can see that the same. Fliegende Rolle hat zwei Seiten, jeweils 1260, was 2520 macht. Also du kannst sehen, dass die beide sind das same. Nice. Okay. So now let's go back to Ezekiel 43. So, so look to Ezekiel 43. Yes. It says, Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like the noise of many waters. And the earth shined with his glory. Mm -hmm. So now the whole earth is full of his so wieder, the ganze Erde glory. Ist voll right? Herrlichkeit. Mm -hmm. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. So when was it that he came to destroy the city? So when is I come on the start to Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel 10, right? Ezekiel 10. Yes, when he took the hot coals to cast it on the city. Also die heiße Kohle genommen hatte, auf die Stadt zu werfen. So he links now this what he sees here with Ezekiel 10. So er verbindet das, was er hier sieht, mit Ezekiel 10. And then it says, Dann sagt es, And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Sheba, which is Ezekiel chapter 1. Und der okay. Keba, das verbindet mit äh, Hesekiel 1. And we already saw Hesekiel 1 and 10 are the same vision. Right? Und wir haben bereits gesehen, dass Hesekiel, Hesekiel 1 und 10 sind dasselbe Vision. And when he saw the glory in Hesekiel 1, what happened to him? Und als er die Herrlichkeit in Hesekiel 1 sah, was geschah mit ihm? Fell on his face. Fell on his face, right? Fiel auf sein so Angesicht. Let's see what happens here. Und lass schauen, was hier geschieht. So, and the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Sheba and I fell upon my face. Yes. Okay. So same, same vision here. Also. Okay. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Okay, so what happened now? The glory of the Lord filled the house, right? This is also what we saw in Ezekiel chapter 10. Right? And when the house was filled, what happened with the court? It was also full of the glory. Right? Okay, so therefore we can see Ezekiel 43 now gives you also the same experience that he sees the glory 
just like in Ezekiel 1 and 10. So wir können sehen, dass uh, in Hesekiel 34 hat er selbe Erfahrung. Er sieht die Herrlichkeit genauso wie in Hesekiel 1 und 10. And he falls upon his face. Und er fällt auf sein Angesicht. Yeah, but the, the chapter before, what was happening? Aber der Kapitel zuvor, was war am Geschehen? The measuring, the measuring right? So das Messen stattfand. Okay. Statt. And therefore, and this is the same work that Ezekiel saw, uh, that Isaiah saw, or John saw in their respective visions, right? Und das war derselbe Werk, die Jesaja oder Johannes in deren Visionen gesahen, gesehen haben. Yes? Sahen. Okay. So therefore we can see basically that this is here now this work beginning of this measuring. So okay. Wir können sehen, dass dies hier das Werk ist des Messens. So the Lord, he will now investigate you, he will measure you. So der Herr wird dich untersuchen, er wird dich messen. Whether you live according to every word of God. Ob du gemäß jeder Wort Gottes lebst. Mm. And when he finds you faithful, Und wenn er dich treu befindet, uh, he will rebuke Satan. Er wird Satan end, right? tadeln am Ende. Uh, and he will pardon you and he will clothe you with the righteous garments and present you before the Father. Er wird dich vergeben, mit dem gerechten Gewand überziehen und den Vater vorstellen. Yes? Amen. Okay. So I just wanted to to put this in place. So ich wollte das nur aufstellen. And just to show that here in this time and we can see based upon Isaiah, Ezekiel and John that there is a work of measuring going on in this time. So, das in dieser Zeit hier basierend auf Hesekiel, Jesaja und Johannes, dass ein Werk des Messens hier vorgeht. Uh, and those visions mark it here and not yet here. Okay. So, say that again, please. Not. Those visions mark it in this time here. So, yeah, diese Vision, die marken es in die markieren es in diese Zeit hier. But not in this time. Aber nicht in dieser Zeit. Because here Ezekiel was morning, day and night, right? Weil Hesekiel in dieser Zeit hat geweckt Tag und Nacht. Uh, and also uh, Isaiah was discouraged. Und auch Jesaja war entmutigt. Uh, and then they all came up to this point and then they saw Christ's work in the most holy place. Und sie kamen alle zu diesem Punkt uh, hin und dann sahen sie das Werk Christus im Allerheiligsten. And also this man uh, that hier in Ezekiel 40. Und auch diesen Mann in Ezekiel 40. Uh, let's go back to this. Und wir dahin wieder. Let's go to verse 3. Vers 3. It says, And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and, and he stood in the gate. So how was this man looking like? So, wie sah diesen Mann aus? Christ. Like brass, right? Wie Bronze. Okay, so, um, let me just remember where it was. There's also this flax in his hand, right? That's the, the temple cleanser, right? Line of flax. So, Christ had twined mm. flax together, right? And went into the temple to cleanse the mm. temple. Yeah. Was it flex? I'm sure. Uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm thinking mm. that it was. Maybe. I, I can't remember that it was flex. But my, this, my is flex. Okay. this is the art. Sorry? There is a place where it has flax. Sorry? I'm just confirming that. There is a place where he has a line which is flax. Yes. In, in the Bible or yeah. in the temple cleansing? Because Scott was mentioning. <laughs> The temple cleansing, where Christ put the quartz together. No, 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 I don't think he says that. Nice. I, I don't think so, but he might have. Okay. But, um, let's go to, no, that was appearance of fire. There was somewhere else a place. There is Sorry? Relation 1 verse 15. Sorry? Relation 1 verse 15. No. no, it's not. Let me just look it up. Mm. Maybe I had it wrong in my mind, <coughs> because I somehow had Ezekiel 8 in my mind. Also, ich hatte Hesekiel 8 im Gedanken. Let's just go there. 
Lass uns nur dahin. Und es sagt hier in Ezekiel 40, Vers 3, dass dieser Mann war wie die Appearance von Brass. Es sagt in Ezekiel 40, Vers 3, das ist ein Mann wie der Ansehen von Bronze. Und Und let's just go to Ezekiel 8. I thought it was also uh, uh, had a wrong in my mind. It was also saying like brass, but it was not like brass, but almost like it. Let's go to Ezekiel 8, verse 2. Ezekiel 8, verse 2. Or let's begin in verse 1. Even. So, fangen wir sogar in Vers 1 an. It says, And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the, mo the month, as I sat in mine house, And the elders of Judah said before me that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. So what came upon him? Was kam über ihn? The, hand of the, Lord. the hand of the Lord, right? The hand des Herrn. Just like in Ezekiel 1 or in Ezekiel 40. Genauso wie in Ezekiel 1 oder Ezekiel 40. Yes. Amen. Okay. So, and then it says, Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire. And from his loin, loins even upward is the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. So, and I had it in my mind that uh, this was like saying brass, but it was fire. In okay. Gedanken, dass das sagt der Bronze, aber es sagt Feuer. In Daniel 10, die Erscheinung von Christus, sagt er, his feet are like polished brass. Also seine Füße sind wie. That's also what Sister Lucia mentioned. Yeah. Revelation 1, also the feet are like brass. And I might be wrong, but I think it's because in Ezekiel, he's, he sees here Christ full of, uh, uh, like the appearance of fire in Ezekiel 8, but in Ezekiel 40, he sees him like appearance of brass. And I think... So, fire in first, uh, Kapitel 8 and in 40, wie bronze. And I think uh, somehow you need to bring these things the, together. The brass was also burnished brass, which was fire and brass mingling. I can't remember, it's somewhere in Revelation 10. Is it Revelation 10? His feet are like burnished brass. That's Daniel 10. Daniel 10, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, anyways. I need to look this up again. There was a nice connection, but I forgot it somehow. Um, yes. Okay, maybe the, we can go to Ezekiel 1 because it says here yeah, that the appearance was the brightness as of the color of amber, right? Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 1, weil es sagt, der Ansehen war wie ja, das Ansehen von Farbe, ja, Amber ist wie Bernstein. Orange, Bernstein ja. Farbe. Ja. Now verse 27, Ezekiel 1, 27. Ezekiel 1, 27. It says oh, you also When, when he saw the appearance of the man upon the throne. Also den Ansehen des Mannes auf dem Thron ist saß. It says, so. and I saw as the color of amber. So here you also again have amber. So right? here has to be the, diesen Bernstein. As the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. So Clearly, it's Christ, right? Yes, it's Christ. So it's Christ here, then therefore in Ezekiel 8 it's also Christ. Christus here, then also in Ezekiel 8 it is also Christus. And therefore, also yeah, the man, like brass, with the measuring line, the measuring line it must be also Christ. Right? The man, uh, as bronze, with this measurement, must then also Christus. Yes. So this schnur or this maßstab is the untersuchung sagt so and we saw also yesterday in the court that the advocate is examining also your cases right und wir haben gestern gesehen dass der fürsprecher auch deinen fall untersucht okay so he's investigating the books whether you are deserving to receive pardon right so er untersucht die bücher um zu sehen ob du würdig bist vergebung zu erhalten he's looking Measuring of whether you lived according to every word of God. Schaut und misst, ob du nun gemäß jedes Wort Gottes lebst. And, uh, and at the end, uh, when you make the final confession, he writes pardon in the books. Und am Ende, wenn du diesen letztendlichen Bekenntnis uh, gibst, dann schreibt er Vergebung in die Bücher. Uh, and he presents you then before the 
stetig vor dem Vater. And also yesterday, if you remember, we were not quite sure whether it's the Father writing pardon in the books or whether it's Christ, right? Und falls ihr daran erinnert, gestern waren wir nicht ganz sicher, ob es nun der Vater in die Bücher äh, niederschreibt oder Christus. But I found a quote. Aber ich habe eine Zitat gefunden. Let's just look at this. It's from yesterday in the live stream. But I can repost it quickly. Lass uns das anschauen. Das war von gestern in den Livestream, aber ich kann es noch mal äh, posten. There she nicely shows us this point. Und hier zeigt sie diesen Punkt. Okay, everybody there? Jeder da? It says, notwithstanding the defects of the people of God, Christ does not turn away from the object of his care. He has the power to change their raiment. He removes the filthy garments. He places upon the repenting, believing ones his own robe of righteousness and writes pardon against their names on the records of heaven. He confesses them as his before the heavenly universe. Satan, the adversary, is shown to be an accuser and deceiver. God will do justice for his own elect. So here we can see, right? So here can we see. So uh, he takes away the filthy garments, gives you the new garments, and he writes pardon against your name. Er nimmt den schmutzigen Gewände weg, gibt dir die neue Gewände und schreibt Vergebung. And then he confesses you before the universe, und dann says. bekennt er dich vor das Universum, Which is Father and all the heavenly angels. was der Vater ist und alle himmlischen Herr. Amen. Amen. Okay, so therefore, I, would, I wanted to show this evening, yeah, that you clearly can see, that this is the time here, that you first morn, day, night, okay. Und ich wollte heute Abend, das ist klar zu das zeigen, dass es klar zu sehen ist, das zuerst klagst du Tag und Nacht. But then the heavens open or the veil suddenly is withdrawn. Aber dann werden die Himmeln geöffnet oder den Vorhang wird plötzlich entfernt. And then you can by faith look into the holy of holies. Und dann kannst du durch Glaube in das Allerheiligste hineinschauen. And you can see the work of Christ. Du kannst das Werk Christi sehen. And you can see basically how he's measuring you. Okay. Und du kannst sehen, wie er dich misst. Uh, he's using the word of God and, to, and he looks. Okay. Und er benutzt das Wort Gottes und er schaut hin. Uh, and basically, uh, and when we bring other illustrations in, uh, he passes by with his goodness. Und wenn du andere Darstellungen darüber legen würdest, er geht an dich vorüber und zeigt seine Güte. And this would lead you to this final confession here. Und das werde dich mm -hmm. denn zu dieser finale Bekenntnis führen am Ende. What's nice is when you link Ezekiel 1 to Ezekiel 10 and then Ezekiel 40, etc. Also Ezekiel 1 mit Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel 40 und so weiter alle zusammenbindest. Und dass du sehen kannst, dass die alle derselbe Vision sind. Es ist am Mitternacht. Fünfter Tag des vierten Monats. But you know, interrupted my thought. Oh, sorry, but I just thought that that was important. No, it's fine, but I was just building up to the thought and okay let me just repeat it again so let me just wiederholen kurz okay so basically uh, you mourn day and night here so du klagst tag und nacht hier an yeah no you mourn we klagst yeah we klagst that would mean accuse ah okay du mm. we klagst tag und nacht sorry we mm. klagst tag und nacht hier an yeah. then the, the heavens are opened dann werden die himmel geöffnet yeah. and you can now see Christ's work going on here in the Most holy place und du faith. kannst das Werk Christi hier im, All, im Allerheiligste äh, durch Glaube ansehen. And then, uh, basically, you also can see how he's measuring you. Du kannst du sehen, auch wie er dich misst. And he's using the word of God. Er benutzt das Wort Gottes. And he wants to lead you to repentance, right? Und er möchte dich zur Buße führen. Yeah, because he wants to write pardon against your name in the books. Er möchte Vergebung okay. neben deinem Namen in die Bücher schreiben. Okay. So therefore he passes by with his glory. So er geht an dich vorüber mit seiner Herrlichkeit, seiner Güte. He brings you to humble confession here. Er bringt dich zur reumütige Bekenntnis hier. Then he writes pardon. Dann schreibt er Vergebung he neben dir. Takes away the filthy garments. Nimmt den schmutzigen Gewände weg. Places the righteous garments. Die gerechte Gewände his. über dich. And then he confesses you before the Father. Und dann bekennt er dich vor dem Vater. And then the Father accepts you and your sins can be blotted out. Der Vater nimmt dich an, deine Sünden werden ausgetilgt. And you're eternally secure. Und dann wirst du aufs ewig sicher sein. 
That's when he takes away the citizen's government. Da ist es, wo er diesen Bürgergewand wegnimmt. Wenn du diese Werk, wenn du nicht erlaubst, dass er diesen Werk, dass er diesen Werk für dich da tun kann, dann hast du immer noch diesen Bürgergewand an. Yes. Okay. And maybe tomorrow we can look at this point. That you yeah, I'm going to go through this stuff okay. again tomorrow morning. Right. Und morgen werden wir dies näher anschauen. Was wir heute Morgen angefangen haben. Right. So, the point I wanted to highlight this evening was yeah, to show that all these visions are parallel. Und der Punkt, den ich zeigen wollte heute, ist, dass all diese Visionen sind yeah. eine parallel. They all marked at midnight. Sind alle an Mitternacht zu markieren. Right. It's after the test already begun, after the morning of day and night. Okay. Nachdem der Test bereits angefangen haben, nach das Wehklagen von Tag und Nacht. And here is now an investigation taking place. Und hierin findet eine Untersuchung statt. But it's Christ investigating you here. Es ist Christus, der dich hierin untersucht. But in order to then bring you to this point where he can now present you before the Father. Um dich zu diesem Punkt zu führen, wo er dich denn den Vater mm. vorstellen kann. And then the Father will investigate you to pronounce you righteous. Und der Vater wird dich untersuchen, um dich gerecht zu nennen. Amen. Amen. Okay. Then. Uh, then are there any questions left? Gibt es Fragen? Okay. Then let's close with our prayer round. Lasst uns mit unserer Gebetsrunde schließen.